Check it out. Today we're going to be diving into a review of the Crink K80 Solid Paint Stick Marker. You're probably familiar with this style of marker. It's going to be pretty versatile, even work on wet surfaces. So something a little bit different about these style of markers is that it's actually a solid paint stick. So instead of having a reservoir of ink in here, you're going to actually have just a solid chunk of paint, kind of like an oil pastel closely related to that. It's going to work almost like a crayon too, that this is just going to chip off as you write on a surface. That being said, it gives some interesting effects and also, you know, you're not wearing down nibs anymore, so you can write on super rough surfaces. You will grab some of the effect of the surface itself, so if it's rough and a brick or something, you're actually going to be able to see some of that texture in it. But once these dry, they're going to be super permanent on a surface. So when writing on smooth surfaces, these are some of my favorite markers because there's barely any friction to use on there. You can just really get going and flow right easily. And comparing the actual body marker and paint type is really closely resembles a Sakura. The more industrial style paint sticks are going to be a lot harder of a paint than the actual stick. So when you do twist the bottom here, you can actually extrude out the paint. So when you do run a little bit low, you can push some more right on out. Works the same way as any general blue stick. So taking a close up look at the marker itself, we've got the classic kind of chrome crink look there. We got permanent paint stick K80 labeled there. Then just a quick description and direction to actually use the paint stick. And then you can see it's also produced here in the United States. These come in at about 10 bucks a piece and I got mine off bombingscience.com. So be sure to head over there and check these out if you're interested in them. Not to mention they have all the other colors in the K80 line. So we also have a blue and a magenta color that aren't featured here. We've got a nice little range here with the three colors. Let's get into it. So I definitely like to start my markers out on a rough surface just to get the top of the paint going. The exterior on the paint can sometimes dry a little bit. Once you get that small top layer off though, these tend to write just super smooth. So I kind of have to take that back immediately. These seem to be writing right out of the box. It definitely seems a little bit harder of a paint stick than a Sakura, but not quite as hard as those kind of general hobo style scrawlers that are you know, just a solid paint stick with maybe that cardboard wrapping. So you can see we're picking up some textures of that foam backing I have on my desk right now. You can also see that you know the black's not super, super dark, but the doubled up areas are having a little bit more in there. So let's see how uh, some of the other colors work out. The yellow wrote real nice and smooth on here. You can see we start off with a little bit thinner of a line and then as the marker gets going, you're rubbing down that tip and it almost doubles in size. Crink's website suggests that it comes out to about a half inch when you're you know, all said and done, which makes sense as you kind of rub this down, you're gonna get a little bit wider from that initial kind of pointed tip. But later on, I'll also show that you can kind of get a chamfered edge and still kind of keep some skinnier lines if you take a little bit of care with your marker. So next up we actually have some black vinyl. Let's see how it writes. Nice smooth surface. I'm sure the paint marker is going to glide real nice on here. So I'm going to have to go off and say that the plastic vinyl actually had a little bit of stick to it. It didn't seem as smooth as like a super greased up oil pen. It felt a little sticky and that there was a little bit more friction than anticipated. But all together, you know, no issue with writing on this. So whereas the yellow I used on just one tag, I was able to get this whole bisque sheet out of the white for about the same amount of paint used on the sticks. So that kind of supports the fact that the rougher surfaces are going to grind down your marker and use quite a bit more paint, but on the smooth stuff you can really get these to stretch out for a ton of different tags. So I think that pretty much covers paper and desk size applications. These are going to work fine, they're going to give some textured effects. But let's go try it out on some other surfaces. I've got some wood, I've got some cardboard, I've got some other plastics that we should try. Alright, next up we're going to do some cardboard and start off with the black. So like I mentioned before, you're going to see that corrugated texture throughout the entire tag. You've got all the ridges of the cardboard underneath. Both of them actually showed up pretty nicely. We still have that kind of lighter black color here. Still opaque and looks fine, just not super, super dark off the background. So if we look at the opacity between all three colors here, we're seeing that they are a little bit lighter. The texture allows for some variation between that opacity. This does give the paint stick some character on something that is textured. Now I'm interested to see some of the darker surface stuff, how that holds up with the opacity on something that's totally smooth. But all together, this is really typical paint stick performance. Nothing too out of the ordinary. It works well, all writes fine and smooth. No complaints there. Let's give that plywood a try and see how things change there. So if you take a close look at the yellow here, it holds up just fine, but we can see these deep grooves aren't actually allowing the paint to hit every little surface. I wasn't pressing too hard as I wasn't trying to you know, ruin the entire marker here, but let's give it a little black and make this actually like a drop shadow and see how the two hold up together. The black definitely helped it out here, but still not too much information in those deep grooves. So maybe super untreated wood's gonna be a little bit too coarse to actually get you know, a smooth tag on. I'm gonna try jamming this in and actually seeing if I can forcibly get enough paint down in there, and we'll see if that holds up a little better. 
So the added pressure is definitely deeper in here, so take that into consideration. You might have to really jam the solid paint down into the grooves if you have something that is you know, a lot deeper than this. But Opacity holds up pretty well on the wood surface. I've got one other untreated style of wood that we should try out, and then we can move on to some of those smooth surfaces. Now this wood here does have still a bunch of texture on it, it's super untreated, nothing special, but the groove's not nearly as deep as all the little particles in the plywood. So let's uh, squeeze some more out of here and see what's up. So this seems to be like a nice mix between the cardboard and then the kind of untreated plywood. And the harder pressed stuff, we've got definitely deeper colors here. The soft, we got the west and the soft tag up here that are definitely lighter. Not as much pressure on there to put as much paint on. But here on the bottom, we also jammed the white pretty good so we can see that, you know, cover holds up real nice. Even white off of kind of the tan color of the wood seems to be looking good. So we can get into a few different things. For starters, the tag was super smooth, by far the easiest surface to write on. With these paint sticks, it's almost got that nice kind of flow style where you can add a little bit more accents to your gestures just because you don't have a lot of that friction that you're working against to actually move the marker. Holding the paint stick out over here, I can pretty much get the same amount of paint on the wall as if I'm you know, actually writing. So you, know, you really don't have to use a ton of pressure to actually get this to write, which is a good note that you can actually get some kind of you know, unique kind of styles with your letters. That also being said, we're seeing that this is not super opaque even over top of the changing colors. Works fine with you know, a single colored background, but as you have that kind of tag coming through and if you are layering this up over top of something else, it's not going to totally cover over top of it and look and freestand just by itself. Since we're probably going to see the same deal with all the other tags on this sheet, let's flip it over. It's not quite as smooth of a surface, but it'll get the job done. So with the smooth surface, we're seeing way more consistent colors between the entire tag. It's not like you're having a bunch of changing variations depending on you know how big that ridge is. The white and yellow both hold up fine on kind of that gray surface color. Really impressed with the smoothness as well. Definitely not quite as smooth as the other side. But let's give it a go on some sheet metal and get right back to that super smooth surface. So the black was actually able to get some better contrast off the competing surface. The yellow, even over the white, was kind of light on the backdrop. You can see the gray sections are actually poking through pretty nicely. So just not so much enough contrast between those colors. Let's hit some yellow on top of this red and see if the contrast works well over this. So this is good news that we can actually see the yellow tag pretty easily on top of this red. It's going to show that it's more of the contrast between what color is underneath the marker that's really important rather than it actually going on top of and actually being opaque over a surface. You're seeing some red through the yellow clearly so it's not perfectly opaque by any means. Which is a good way to know how to use this and what to go about, what kind of surfaces might you be able to get away with, and what you're going to actually need to be sure that it's a full color underneath. So the last demonstration I want to do is an underwater test. You see we've got some Sakura tags in here already but I'm going to fill up this trash bin and maybe take up some of this empty real estate over here and see if we can get tags underwater. They're claiming that we can do it on wet surfaces so why not totally submerge it and see if it works there too. Alright so we're going to go after the yellow and white on this. Obviously the black's not going to show up too well. High hope so let's see what's up. We definitely got the upside down tag in there. White worked really well. Let's do some yellow a little bit deeper. No problem at all either. So maybe if you are a scuba expert, you'll take this and take it on to uh, some new new levels. But right now, I mean, that's all I can really think of practical applications. Let me hit a couple more just for fun. Getting a little bit close up on here, you can see the tag looks good. It will wipe off right now as it was you know, totally submerged in water. So you might get a little bit of chipping before it dries. But I mean, all together, definitely on there, no problems asked. And the writing too was pretty smooth. It obviously is still that plastic surface, so you get easy gliding right there and no real complaints on that front. So I'd definitely say this works well in water. Maybe we'll do a quick little dry off and we can test the markers totally on a dry version of this and see if there's any difference. It's a little spotty getting that reach in there, but all together, still right smooth on plastic. So all together, the Crink K80 worked really well throughout all these applications. It was right in line with what I expected out of a solid paint marker stick, not to mention what I expected out of Crink. They're always putting together really solid products. I've never really had an issue with you know performance or quality or you know unmet expectations based on descriptions. So all together, the paint stick worked awesome. Now to compare and contrast it with some of the other stuff that's on the market, it's a little bit harder of a paint stick than a Sakura. Sakuras I tend to find are a little bit softer, they have that more oily side to them, much closer to like an oil pastel. 
Whereas something more like a general scrawler that's more industrial grade, it's gonna be even harder than this. But that's definitely not a knock on the performance. As you saw, it worked just fine on every surface and it was even, you know, just fine to write even right from the get-go. I didn't have to break in the tips of these much at all. They seem to just work fine right from the start. The body marker is also very typical of solid markers. You got the twist tip back, worked fine with extruding more, as well as it retracted also fine in case you did put too much out at once. As for the colors available, it's definitely a shorter line with only five different colors, but you get your pretty much essentials in there, so nothing too bad there. You could definitely get some new split kind of style stuff with these. Not too much complementary colors in that respect, so you're not going to get maybe those rainbows or those pastel colors, but all together, still like this, and I'm definitely going to be trying some new uh, splitting efforts out with this, maybe even next week's video. Now most crank products definitely sit at a slightly higher price point comparatively to some of the other stuff on the market. These markers are no exception. Sitting at 10 bucks a piece, they are kind of expensive for what you're getting. The Direct Sakura comparison of that is only coming in at three or four bucks depending on where you grab them. For the over 200% price hike, I'm not sure you're getting twice of the performance out of it. You know, Sakuras are pretty much that staple out of Japan, but if you do want to go with the US made stuff, Crank is obviously going to be an awesome option for that. They've got those five colors like I mentioned. And definitely top of the line performance. I have no complaints about using these. They work exactly as described and on the whole range of surfaces, this is gonna be a real utility marker at the end of the day. You know, working on those metal smooth surfaces or something like you need to crush something and not have to worry about a nib being ruined, you're gonna be able to use these on super rough surfaces as well. Definitely keep in mind about that contrast. So these lighter colors are not gonna be great maybe on that silver metal with anything other than just the silver metal exposed. So by no means are they a loud marker and that their opacity is going to stand out a ton over something that's already been scrolled on a bunch. But if you are getting a fresh surface, these are working sweet on something with the darker surfaces if you got a light marker or a light surface if you get the dark marker. Also that underwater test was nice and fun to do. I can't say that I've ever actually drawn with a solid paint marker underwater. Definitely hit wet surfaces before, but that definitely goes to show that these are, you know, once again, that versatile marker that you're going to be able to use in pretty much any climate conditions or surface type. Like I mentioned at the beginning, if you want to check out the K80 that was featured here, be sure to head over to bombingscience.com. They've got a ton of graffiti supplies. They've got a huge range of the crank products. So definitely browse around there for anything that you need. If you enjoyed the review, feel free to spray that like button or share the video with somebody that also might enjoy it. Consider subscribing if you don't want to miss the weekly graffiti content. Last week I put together a big sticker update where I'm taking in packs from a bunch of other people and sending some stickers back to you in return. And as it's quite relevant, the last review I did was on the Jiffy cap. It's this sweet retro cap that works awesome on a ton of spray paint. Gives you even skinny all the way up to fat lines. So maybe check that review out if you missed it. That's all I've got on the KAs today. Watch out for a new kind of split streaker tutorial next week. That's going to do it for me, guys. Peace.